Uh, Gary, thank you for your response. Um, just a quick question, quick clarification. When you're talking about the lizards, or it was dinosaurs, where you said that you would expect the dinosaurs to change their natures, how does that meet the objection that we're essentially expecting a mouse to pull a plow designed for a horse? Or we are expecting a horse to crawl around uh, through little door holes at the bottom of the wall and eat cheese and uh, thumb their nose at Sylvester the cat. Um, is it rational, reasonable um, expectation for something to be something that it is not? Now, I choose my words carefully here because, again, I, I don't want to sort of corner you with this semantic thing. You say that we should be something. We should rather change our nature. You would expect us to change our nature um, in accordance with our intelligence. Now, um, I would say that I disagree with you um, because I would say that that's not possible and it creates conflict uh, in the form of guilt. Um, and guilt is coercion. Guilt is internal conflict. It's internal aggression. It's uh, sublimated aggression. Sublimated harm. It is harm. It lacerates your mind. Um, what I would say is um, I would sort of rephrase what you say simply to read I would hope that or perhaps even expect that we would consciously act in a way that is not in accord with certain aspects of our nature. Now, the emphasis is essentially what's important here, because at the end of the day, the overt actions are the same. But it's just, are we reacting against guilt? Are we being held to an impossible standard, but that impossible standard is a form of motivation for us? Um, there's an ideal up there that we know that we can't really meet because we're not constructed that way. But we should use that as our goal, because if we don't use that as our goal, then we are somehow not changing our nature when we should change our nature. This is I'm just sort of using your terminology. If I've misread you, then just correct, correct me. Um, we, would, you said you would expect these lizards to change their nature. Okay, so it, it does look as though you say that they should be non-lizard-like. You would expect them to change what they are. I would say um, that um, that sort of puts the emphasis on more or less another punishment, a fear of punishment. The expectation to change our nature is based upon the fear of failure to meet expectation. I would say that we should consciously opt not to act in accordance with certain aspects of our nature, not because these aspects are bad, but because this, you know, certain circumstances are neither the time nor the place to do this. Um, for example, if you turn on the TV, it would look as though humans are fascinated by violence. There's just so much of it on television. Now, should they be fascinated by violence? That's not the same question as are they fascinated by violence? If we are fascinated by violence, it doesn't do us any good to simply say we shouldn't be. We should see what it means to be human, and if this is part of what we are, what is an outlet for this that is not 
disruptive to other beings. Rather than saying, I must not be this way, when, if we want to use our reptilian nature, is constantly telling us we are this way. Um, guilt is a very poor motivator, and there are those who believe that guilt actually contributes to violence and crime. Um, Freud even said that guilt comes before the overt crime, or he suggested it. So I would say that guilt is actually an inefficient motivator if results are what matters. If all that we're doing is fleeing the lash, as opposed to moving towards something, consciously, freely stepping into something better, um, I would say that we've found a fundamental flaw in our ethical system. Guilt doesn't make you a better person. It probably doesn't even make you a more overtly or a overtly better person or a person whose conduct is likely to be beneficial. Um, I guess that's an argument for the psychologists, but I'm of the opinion that uh, we may have reached the usefulness of guilt in our society. And I'm not saying that we jettison it, but once it gets to this point, we should at least understand that it might have stopped being anything remotely resembling part of the solution and become part of the problem. Um, how do we motivate ourselves to do what is colloquially called the right thing. Thanks for your response.